good evening everyone metabolic and nutritional diseases in sheep and goat so here i have concentrated only regarding the clinical management and purely regarding the practical aspect how to diagnose a case clinically and how to treat the case hypocalcemia is very common notice in the sheep and also in goat so in large animal practice in cattle in cow the hypocalcemia will be exhibiting immediately after calving so when animal calves within 42 to 72 hours will be getting more number of cases of hypocalcemia that we everyone knows but in sheep it is during the late pregnancy period so whenever the sheep is exhibiting the uh, symptoms of hypocalcemia i will tell the symptoms during the uh, late pregnancy period whenever the animal is going for recumbency you have to think about hypocalcemia in sheep and the calcium level will be very much reduced in the blood and it is mainly due to the stress condition stress will aggravate the absorption of calcium and it will lead to hypocalcemia in the days the last time of the pregnancy and whenever the multiple fetuses the availability of calcium will be reduced whenever the inclement weather conditions these are all the predisposing factors for hypocalcemia so when the animal goes for uh, reduced intake of feed or anorectic naturally the calcium level will be reduced and the animal will exhibit signs of hypocalcemia and also reduced magnesium level in the serum that is directly related to the secretion of parathyroid hormone and vitamin d so magnesium when that magnesium level is reduced that will also trigger the cases of so when the, uh, the grasses or forages they contain more oxalate they will chelate or bind the calcium and they will uh, bind the availability of uh, calcium and the hypocalcemia will occur first the earliest clinical signs will be that the animal will be having staggering gait mild staggering gait will be there suddenly the animal will fall down that is ataxia and the nervous signs will be noticed in the early stage nervous signs means there is no tonic clonic convulsions slightly the muscular tremors and the animal will be slightly nervous symptoms will be noticed the animal will be having incoordination gait will be there and uh, hyperactivity in the early stages but the animal is the early stages in that time you will be noticing the muscle twitching of the lips and eyelids and ears frequently twitching of the lips eyelids and the ears and uh, later stage the animal will go for the sternal recumbents so uh, the fasciculation should be noticed all over the body and these type of symptoms we cannot able to see only the farmer will be able to see suppose if you are in a farm condition you can able to see if you are monitoring a farm you can able to see otherwise the farmers will be noticing these type of symptoms and later they will bring the animal to the hospital only after they become sterile recumbents so here we have to rule out whether the animal is having acidosis or not in acidosis the rumen will be having fluid splashing sound when you palpate the rumen it will be having fluid splashing sound and in this later stages the animal will go for a lateral recumbency in the uh, final stages so they will bring the animal in the sternal or lateral recumbency the pupil will be dilated and uh, urine is not voided dung is not voided sometimes the animal may be in the unconscious stage they will bring the animal in the unconscious stage see here the animal is in the sternal recumbency it is the unconscious stage all the reflexes are reduced menstrual reflex is reduced and the nasal secretions will be there and uh, when i palpate the when we palpate the rumen the rumen is not having fluid splashing sound so acidosis ruled out rumen is duffy in nature when you see the <coughs> rectum the rectal mucosa is slightly relaxed that is a clear thing which gives you a clue of hypocalcemia so in acidosis and all the animal will be having semi solid dung material or watery dung material will be there here the dung material will be solid in nature or pellety in nature or normal in consistency and the dung material is retained in the rectum partially rectal spittle will be very much relaxed and the uh, urine is not voided the animal will be in the comatose state see the rectal spittle is slightly relaxed you can very much appreciate the clinical signs the animal is unconscious when you see the people the people is dilated so from the history also you can say you can ask the animal is in full term pregnant then you can uh, uh, make a diagnosis tentatively of hypocalcemia see the pupil is very much dilated so what are all the other condition which have pupil dilated enterotoxemia the pupil will be dilated plant poisoning will be having pupil dilatation will be there but in that and all the animal won't go for comatose stage the animal will be going for convulsion severe convulsions so that you can make it uh, difference from the other differential diagnosis so uh, reflexes will be very much reduced but the respiration will be there the respiration pattern will be there but the animal will be like unconscious and uh, reduced the reflexes will be there with the nasal secretions will be nasal secretion and the mild salivation will be there so you identify it is a case of hypocalcemia and you can start giving uh, calcium borogluconate slow iv and uh, immediately the animal will respond to the calcium the animal which is in the sternal recumbency or the lateral recumbency immediately it will pass urine 
the fire passage of urine urination is the positive sign of response to the calcium even after giving calcium if the animal is not urinating it is not a case of hypocalcemia then you have to reevaluate your diagnosis it may be a you have to verify whether it is acidosis or not so after treating with the calcium boroglucanate you can uh, immediately the animal will respond and the animal will immediately stand and it will walk everything the animal will pass urine and uh, then will be passed and the animal will have start taking feed and all and unlike cattle here the one of the important point is the recurrence is most important I mean, immediately after 8 hours within 8 hours 6 to 8 hours recurrence of hypercalcemia is more common so we have to repeat the treatment whenever it is needed so you have to go for subcutaneous calcium boroglucanate administration or oral administration after giving calcium the animal urinated and it passed the tongue and the animal got up and it is normal so you have to monitor you have to tell the you want to see the shivering see in the early stages it will be like that so in the early stage of hypercalcemia it will be same like a tremor will be noticed and uh, twitching of the lips will be noticed and the ear uh, twitching will be noticed and the generalized muscle twitching also will be noticed so keep it in mind in sheep and goat hypocalcemia occurs during the last trimester of pregnancy that too in the last few weeks of pregnancy that is a simple logic and clue which gives you a Uh, for your better diagnosis okay so calcium boroglucanate iv half iv and half subcutaneous if you are having doubt or if you are uh, having a fear of giving calcium immediately i mean without your uh, uh, you may be in some doubt so you can very well mix the calcium in normal saline mix with the normal ns and you can give iv safely and repeat it at 8 hours interval to avoid recurrence and oral calcium syrup can be advised and when you are giving oral calcium don't uh, advise the gel preparations because the farmers they will uh, push the gel squeeze the gel preparation and it will get aspirated and the animal will get aspiration pneumonia and it will be spoiled and it will get collapsed so avoid uh, uh, drenching the uh, gel preparation if you are using the gel preparation the precautionary measures how to drenching should be carried out and also avoid uh, the the oral calcium should not be given in unconscious animals so don't give any oral calcium when the animal is unconscious state. unconscious animal should be treated with the parental calcium boroglucanate it should not be uh, given orally only oral calcium should be given only when there is swallowing reflex is present otherwise you should not go for after the recovery after the treatment after the recovery then you can for follow up you can give the oral calcium the differential diagnosis pregnancy toxemia it always coexists with hypocalcemia it's very easy unless otherwise if you are having a urinalysis and hypoglycemia so whenever you are giving this treatment you will be giving the combined treatment with the dns dns and calcium boroglucanate everything will be covered and the other differential diagnosis hypermagnesemia and ruminal acidosis it is very easy to identify ruminal acidosis by just by uh, palpating the rumen whether it is having feed splashing sound or not then polyencephalomalacia it's very easy to diagnose plus by you see the clinical sign by nystagmus and incoordination the animal won't go for comatose stage the animal will be active and alert here the animal will be in the comatose stage in polyencephalomalacia the animal won't go for the comatose stage only the convulsions will be there nystagmus will be there and botulism that will be getting confused so in small ruminants botulism and uh, hypocalcemia will be a confusing one always so botulism the abdominal muscles the abdominal expression will be uh, you can able to appreciate it. and uh, unlike cattle the animal won't go for uh, cattle recruitment here the animal will be only in the sternal recruitment and the salivation produced the salivation will be there so sternal recruitment see with the produced salivation and animals uh, which are reared nearby the poultry farm area you have to think about the differential diagnosis of botulism and enterotoxemia severe convulsions will be there. severe convulsions with the pupillary dilatation diarrhea will be there and sudden death will be there. so these are all the differential diagnosis you have to keep it in mind before treating hypocalcemia but very easy just by seeing the dung and the relaxed uh, anal sphincters and the uh, last trimester of pregnancy you can very well treat the hypocalcemia